Welcome to the N1IR electronics blog. This goes over the assembly of the narrowband emergency messaging system interface cable that was sold to the Genesis Amateur Radio Club. In your kit, uh, you should have some the schematic with the uh, parts list on it. So let me go over the parts list real quick. You have three one microfarad capacitors. You have a 10 microfarad capacitor. You have two 1N4148 signal diodes. Uh, J1 is a part of the cable, so we skip over that. I'll get into that a little bit later, how to assemble it. Uh, you should have two 2N3904 NPN transistors. Double check the part number, make sure that they're correct. It should say 3904 on them. R1, which is 100K, which is brown, black, yellow. The next one is a 47K. That is R2. That should be yellow, violet, orange. We have a 330K, which is orange, orange, yellow. And we have two 4.7Ks that's going to be yellow, violet, red. And we have one transformer. This transformer is a little bit different than the original design. Uh, this is actually an 8 ohm to 1000 ohm trans transformer. So the black side is your 8 ohm side. That's very important. Uh, when you measure it on your meter it's going to be like 0 0.3, 0 0.4 ohms. That's okay. Uh, it's at, the 8 ohms is actually the AC impedance of this guy. And you should have a PC board. Now what I recommend doing before you do any soldering is clean off your PC board. Uh, you can either use a 3M scrub pad that's non-conductive, or what I do is I use a eraser. I just erase the whole board, make it nice and clean, clean off any oxidization that happens to be on there, uh, clean it off with alcohol, isopropyl alcohol and it makes a nice clean board for you to solder onto. Uh, I would not recommend using steel wool. Uh, steel wool uh, will leave uh, traces of the uh, wool behind and possibly short out your board. So, um, One thing that is different than uh, these are one-of-a-kind kits. Each kit was assembled by hand, uh, milled out by hand. Uh, the mill is what we call an isolation style so we still have the copper ground so you want to be careful when you solder this not to short this out to the copper ground uh, copper ground still in place okay so let's get started so I would also recommend for tools you have a set of what we call in the industry helping hands they'll hold the board in uh, very easily uh, so you can have your hands free. Um, for this video I probably won't going to be using it. So we have our board. Now our board layout is similar to the schematic. If I pull over the schematic really quick with my parts over here, I have the transformer uh, C2, R2, Q1 and it's set up very similar to the schematic. I have the transformer over here. I have Q1 which is these three holes. Um, D1's over here. D2 is up here. It's, it follows pretty close to the schematic. So again this is a one-off, one-of-a-kind kit. Um, so I didn't have any silk screening so um, there's no silk screening on the top so you have to kind of figure out what holes go where so that's the purpose of this video is to show you how to assemble this so let's put in the transformer first our transformer is going to go in uh, with the black side facing the left the black side is your 8 ohm side and that's going to interface with your sound card so when you plug this into your sound card it's going to look like an 8 ohm speaker and it's going to impedance match to the microphone side of your radio. Your microphone side of your radio is somewhere around uh, a few hundred ohms. 
so I'll closely match that. So here is my transformer in there. I have the black side facing left. And now I'm going to prepare to solder this. So when you solder, you want to use a good quality solder. Uh, I like to use the Kesser. Um, this is a .025. Uh, it's a number. It's a Kesser number 44. Um, used a lot in industry. It's 63% tin, 37% lead. Stay away from the lead-free stuff. I've, I've dealt with it before. It's it's not that great for the hobbyist. So I'm gonna solder these in place. Now you notice how I'm holding the iron um, in line with the trace, so it doesn't uh, bridge over to that copper ground. You also want to clean off all your leads. It makes it a lot easier to solder. Clean off the leads of all your components. You don't have to solder in the center pins, but I like to. Okay, so next um, we want to solder in our mounting post for our transformer. So this requires a little bit of finesse. Oh, there we go. There's, uh, I'm starting to bridge over that. That's okay, I can come back later with some solder wick and clean that up. So that's going to be in one of my other videos. I'm going to show you how to do that. So I just keep feeding the solder in. And notice how I have the iron kind of in the hole so I can bridge that gap. Okay, so I'll fix that up a little bit later in the next video. It's kind of hard to see because I have the camera in front of my face. Um, so, there's our transformer. It's in. Uh, you want a good quality, sharp pair of diagonal pliers. Cut off your excess. So I would recommend doing one component at a time. Uh, I know some people do like all the parts at once, but it's really harder to solder if you do that. All right, so the next part we want is the transistor. So we're going to put in a couple transistors here. Now to speed this up, I'm going to do two components at the same time. So you want your transistor up a little bit off the board. And grab the other transistor and it goes in these three holes here. So now I'm going to solder that in place. Now you see where the helping hands comes into play because this is pretty hard to solder on the desk like this so I'm just going to grab them real quick. That just uh, yeah, makes it a lot easier. Okay, there we go. There's those true transistors in. We're going to stop it at, uh, at this point and I'm going to continue on to a second video.